Guess what? It's Veda day number two. And it's Veda time. That's right. It's Veda time, baby. We're going to jump right into another video. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I actually process my audio in Adobe Audition. I've had a couple of requests for people that want to know, yo, how do you make the Q2U sound even better than it already does out the box? I'm going to show you. Let's jump right into the video. Hey, what's going on party people and thanks for tuning in to another video. For those of you who are watching for the first time, my name is Walter Jeanette, founder and creative director of Create, Inspire and Solve. And on this channel, you can expect to find inspiration and solutions that are going to help you build a better brand, grow your business and ultimately help you create a community around the things that you're most passionate about. So again, if this is your first time watching, thank you so much. Go ahead. Please feel free to hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, click that bell notification so you can be notified every single time I post new content to the channel. But let's hop into today's video. All right, so right now you're getting a chance to, to kind of come behind the scenes and look in my world and see exactly how I go about processing this audio. And I know a lot of times um, you guys say, it's like, well, yo, um, how is it that you're going to edit your audio and you're starting off in Premiere? Um, this is where, you know, this is what I use to edit. So this is actually where we're gonna start. But a couple of things that I actually wanna show you um, is I'm, I'm gonna play back this audio real quick because the foundation, if the foundation is not right, then, then everything else is gonna be screwed up and so we're just going to start right here and this is actually going to be another video i'm going to be posting today as well but i want you to pay attention um over here to where you see the audio meters at. and i want you to see my goal is to shoot for somewhere around negative 12 negative 15 db so you're with sean kennel and the think media um brand and one of the things that he always says is that at some point you just got to press record so you can see I'm hitting somewhere around that negative 15. Um, you know, I, I try to keep that room between negative 15 and negative 12 dB. Um, and that's crucial because I wanna give myself headroom for when I actually go in and edit. So one of the first things you gotta understand, you know, when when processing audio, when I talk about your foundation, foundation being correct, is, um, you know, the, the, the initial audio that you're getting outside of the microphone. So when I'm using the Samsung Q2U or the Rode pod mic or any other mic I do I, I follow the same process so I use everybody knows I actually use the Rodecaster Pro as my mixer or my interface well what I've done is I've set the gain um, to let if I check it right now and I would show this to you guys but I don't have time um, but I've set the game to around about 40% um, so 40% is a sweet spot for me and that's what's getting me to about that negative 15 DB um, that's set for my voice all right so negative 15 db is what i'm shooting for and i'm able to I'm, you know i see that on the roadcaster pro and i'm actually able to confirm that here in adobe um premiere all right so what happens is you know once i have all of my layout so i haven't formatted anything yet this is just kind of a rough draft um what i do is i actually right click so actually after i've set up my sequence i right click on my timeline and i go up here to say edit clip in adobe audition all right so we're gonna give that time to open up. You'll see the window that comes up and says render and replace. And then it's gonna go ahead and open up Audition. All right, so now we're in Adobe Audition. So again, this is actually the DAW um, that I use, the DAW that I use to actually do all of my editing. I just stay right in um, you know, Adobe. I've used things like Logic, GarageBand, um, Pro Tools, but listen, I, I have the Adobe Creative Suite that I'm paying for, so I might as well just get some use out of it. Um, so if, if those of you that have never seen what a, what a waveform actually looks like, here it is right here. So we're in Adobe Audition. Um, um, and again, you can kind of see um, as far as, you know, I, I have a nice thick um, waveform. You don't want skinny. I know the world loves skinny people. Um, when it comes to audio, you do. We don't like skinny. We don't because that's the ting, 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 ting. We like thick as grit, <laughs> as grits, good Southern hospitality um, waveforms. And so one of the things you'll notice here is there's really no um there's no you don't really see any waveform here there's no audio but if you look at the spectral graph all right you can see there's still some noise down here 
all right and this is the actual noise floor so this is what we this is the noise um, that's going on in the room so what I do anytime I record I make sure that I leave at least at least five seconds but at least a couple of seconds to where I just okay hey without me breathing into the mic or even if I am breathing let's just capture that ambient noise that's going on in the room and the reason why is because I'm getting ready to do this right here so what I do is I go in and I go into my effects and the first thing I do is I go to amplitude and compression and then I go to normalize all right I normalize everything to zero DB um, because that's pretty much what I'm shooting for all right and I normalize all channels equally so that's step number one for me All right, so what you can see is, you know what I'm saying, that wave. Now you see, you, you've probably seen something that looks like this. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna accentuate your highs and your lows or whatever. So it's gonna give, I say much more range um, in your voice, you know what I'm saying? And some, and, and again, I'm not an audio engineer. I'm an audio junkie. So, so, you know, I don't, I don't need y'all coming for me down in the comments, um, about my process. This is just what I do and, and what I figured out along the way. So then what, what I can see, you can also see that noise floor got a little bit higher. So I'm actually play this for you so you can hear what it sounds like. got to be smart this is what I get for trying to be grand also key tip make sure you get your life together <laughs> all right now let's try to play this back all right y'all you you can kind of hear what that sounds like again All right, so that's all the noise that's actually going on in the room right now. So what I do, I just highlight a section of that, right click, capture noise print, all right? Then I hit Control A or Command A, depending on what the system is that you use. I'm gonna go to Effects. I'm gonna go down here to Noise Reduction and Restoration, and I'm gonna click on Noise Reduction. So just so you know, um, these are the settings that I've actually figured out. So um, it doesn't actually start off like this. You, you kind of have to change um, the noise reduction to fit what it is that you want to do. So um, one of the biggest things is, you know, our FFT um, size is 4096. You know, we wanted to take a snapshot of 4000, um, you know, print snapshot. So my spectral decay is 65 percent. Precision factor is seven. Smoothing is one. Transition width is zero dB. I want to reduce it by about 16 dB. So that's pretty much going to take it all the way out. And then we want to reduce it by 35 percent. A lot of people will say, well, why not reduce it by 100 percent? One of the things is when you start playing around with audio, you will get this, this 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 warp noise that really, really, really doesn't sound good. So this is kind of the sweet spot. So you can see that this is everything that's happening beneath the floor that's not supposed to be. So you can actually take a quick screenshot of that if you want to. Again, these are the settings that work for me. Other people may have a lot of different settings. This is what works for me. OK. All right. So I'm going to apply that. And what should happen is you should see. See how that space, it got dark. So let's hit play. There's nothing there. All right. So now I've already removed my noise. So the second thing I do is I actually have a rack that I use. So let's go to the rack. And it's called the walt rack. All right. So the first step was to normalize. Second step is I did the um, the actual um, uh, noise removal. And then um, the third step for me is I actually do the walt rack. So in my walt rack, it consists of a, a 20 band um, graphic equalizer, parametric EQ, and then a single brand, um, single band compressor. All right. So I'll go in so you can actually see what this looks like. So I use the 20 band EQ for my highs. So you can see all of this stays flat. So I get over here my 20, you know, my 20 band EQ to kind of give me that pop 
on the high end in my treble. I use the 20 band for the treble. I don't like using the 20 band um, for, for any of my lows and mids. I actually use the parametric EQ for that. Don't ask me a hundred questions why I'm not an audio engineer. I'm just an audio junkie. To me, I think the parametric EQ, it works better. And dialing in, I think I can dial in more um, those actual lows and mids that I want. But I use that 20 e band, you know, that 20 band EQ just to kind of put my highs in there and the frequencies that I like. So again, if you want to take a screenshot of that, you can go ahead and take a screenshot of that now. All right, let's look at the parametric EQ. So this is kind of how, you know, I have my, you know, what I'm doing on my low end and, and, and I still even add a little bit of that high end, um, over there at the end. So again, if you want to take a quick screenshot of this, I told you parametric EQ is kind of where I add in my lows, um, you know, and kind of play around with my mids and stuff like that. And this is still where I kind of make those adjustments. Like I'll even tweak this, even though this is a preset, I'll even tweak this. All right, and then I throw that single band compressor in there. If you want to take a screenshot of that, you can take a screenshot of that. All right, and just another tip for those of you, you know, as far as, you know, how I made that preset. Once you go in here, because I can add some other stuff, like if I want to, you know, we can play around with all of these things. Um, and I probably could, there's one more step that I take. I probably could add it here just so it would go ahead and do it all at one time. I'm kind of finicky about that, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on and off. Oh, well, let me let me say what I was going to say. Once you have everything in your rack that you want, you can actually save it by hitting this button right here. Um, and it'll say save effects racks and preset. So, you know, you always have to come back to this. So you don't have to put all of those things in there. You can just go back to walk rack. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn my audio off. I'm going to turn the audio off. So just hit the button here and I'm going to play it for you so you can hear what it sounds like. And then I'm going to turn the audio on so you can see what the difference is. Gear will never outweigh your gift. All right, I can't let y'all hear all of it because I ain't posted the video yet. So now I'm gonna turn this on. And what I do is I usually play around with how wet and how dry it is. A sweet spot for me, depending on what I'm doing, is somewhere around 50 to 70%. But I'm gonna just let you hear what it sounds like at 100%. Gear will never outweigh your gift. So you hear how that sounds? You hear how it is very, very, very processed. And one of the reasons I love the way it sounds like that is because I'm a musician. All right. I'm a musician um, primarily, you know, in, in, in gospel, um, neo soul, R&B, those genres. So anytime I'm processing audio or if I'm quote unquote mixing or something like that, I'm thinking end result, I'm kind of thinking, how would I want this to sound on the album? How would I want my album, you know, how would I want my audio, my vocals to sound on the album? The problem is when you're podcasting, especially with somebody else, everybody's voice doesn't necessarily register the same. So let's say um, I'm, I'm probably going to pull this back so it can sound a little bit more natural. But so you can be like, oh, like I love the way that sounds. That's that sweet spot. So to me, 100 percent is too wet. I'm going to pull it back to about 60. Actually, let's just do what I normally do. I'm gonna pull it back to about 50. And again, I'm gonna let you hear it with it off. I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna play a little bit more so you can kind of get more of a sample. Gear will never outweigh your gift. Um, too many times, too often. All right, so again, that's all y'all get. And I'm gonna turn this back on and I, and I think I like this a little bit better. Gear will never outweigh your gift um too many times too often um we you know what i'm saying so so you kind of get the gist of what i do there um and and just it, it just gives you that that extra bit of presence that that i love that that kind of makes this mic come alive that really makes it sexy i love it it's great out the box but i love it so then i actually hit apply all right, and that's gonna apply my effects to everything. So what you're gonna see is gonna crunch down my waveform, okay? Which I love. And that means that my audio is not gonna necessarily spike. It's gonna be even all across the way. And I'm sitting here going like this, like y'all can see me doing that. Um, all right, so once I've done that, I'm gonna go back to effects and I'm gonna go back to amplitude and compression. 
And I'm going to normalize this again, because here's the thing. One thing that sucks is when you're listening to a podcast and and or you listen to different parts or you're listening to a song, you're listening to different parts of a video and the audio keeps changing um, audio. That's too low. It really sucks because now I got to jack up my car speakers. I got to jack up my phone speakers. I got to almost damage my ears to hear what it is you're trying to say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to normalize this again back to zero dB because now I'm normalizing it with the effects that I have in it. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you a quick sample of what that sounds like. Gear will never outweigh your gift. All right. And so you can see, you know, you actually, you can see where my DB, my levels are hitting um, too many times. So now I'm around often. about um, negative we see seven people focusing and spending which is the range where I kind of want to be. That's that safe range, you know, somewhere at least negative 12. I don't want to hit all the way up to zero because, you know, I'm in the, you know, I'm getting into the yellow. I'm getting to that cautionary point. But around there, that's the sweet spot. And then what I do, I do one more thing. I go back to effects. I go down here um, to amplitude and compression and I go down to dynamics processing okay the reason i do this is because this is some additional compression um this is an, an additional expander where i want to take just a little 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 bit of that edge off of it i just i just want to round it off right now it's sharp right now it's very i was like what are you doing right now it's very sharp i want to round off the audio so i can get a very 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 smooth sound all right so I'm gonna, so again, you just heard what it sounds like. So then I'm gonna play this too much time on gear. I'm guilty of this. Um, now, so you see, you see that sweet spot? Uh, you know, you, you see that sweet spot right there? You see that sweet spot right there? Again, I'm not an audio engineer, I'm an audio junkie. And if you want me to do a video, another video, really kind of explaining what each of these things does, I can definitely do that. And like you said, it just took, you know what I'm saying? We just we just made our um, thing look beautiful again. We just made our waveform look beautiful again. And then what I do, you hit file, go to save, or you can hit command or control S or whatever. It's gonna save it. I'm done with audition. I don't have to come back in here. I'm gonna quit this. All right, and then if we go back, you just seen in, in Premiere, it actually ups, they updates that. If you look over here in your project folder, you can see now you have this audio, this art that's been extracted. And you know, and so that 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 gives you an idea just of, of what happens, you know. Like I said, I, I love I love the bridge that's set up between the applications. Premiere, I can hop right over in audition, make that change real quick, and then hop back over in Premiere. A lot of people is like, yo, can't you do that? inside of premiere you can to a certain extent but you won't be able to see the waveform like that again i'm an audio junkie i want to be able to see it so i can actually do what it is that i knew i need to do all right so i'm hoping that you were able to find some value in me actually doing that i hope that makes sense again if you want me to do a more detailed a slower video i know i kind of rushed through that um because it's a lot longer um, than I wanted it to be, but just let me know, you know, drop some comments down and did that make sense? Is there anything else you want me to go over um, for my audio engineers out there? I definitely don't mind you coming for me. Look, I always want to learn. So if you see anything that I did that uh, didn't make sense or I didn't explain that well, definitely drop your comments below. But again, like I said, if this is your first time watching or if you haven't done already, feel free, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And again, click the bell so you can be notified every single time that I post new content to the channel. But again, until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.